Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to share in this video more about the rapture and also about the uh, coming uh, tribulation or uh, the, what the scripture talks about, the day of the Lord or the day of Yahuwah. And uh, in my previous video that I did, I mentioned the fact is that uh, I believe that the actually the rapture will begin uh, the judgment that's going to come upon the earth. And I, sh I shared a a little bit about that in the, in the previous video, but and I'm going to go more into that as well. But um, I'm going to start today, though, in reading from uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, and I'll begin at verse uh, 29. And he, and of course, this is talking about the Messiah here. He's talking to his disciples, and he says, And he spoke to them a parable Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, when they when they now shoot forth, you see and know that yourselves that summer is near or near at hand. So likewise, you, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Yahuwah, that's the creator's name, uh, is at hand or here. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that day come upon you unaware. For a snare it shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Now, this here, uh, I want to make a mention of the fact is that in verse 38 or 35, he says it's, it's a snare that's going to come on the whole earth. Now, if you understand, of course, about a snare, it's... Um, in, in relation to the way I think about it is, is some, a hunter putting a snare out in the woods to catch an animal or whatever. And um, once that animal, of course, he's not aware of the snare being there. And uh, he or the animal will, uh, once he's entrapped with this uh, snare, um, most of the time they can't get loose from that unless they have some kind of help. So, but they're, they're trapped. That's the point. And it catches them by surprise. Now, Yahushua is using, the Messiah is using this as an illustration of what it's going to be like and uh, when this event happens. Now, he, he's talking, you know, in, in the scriptures, I'm going to show you where, um, especially in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul is mentioning or dealing with two different things. He's, talk, he's talking about the rapture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 13 down through verse 18, he's talking specifically about the rapture, of course, in those verses. But he's also dealing with the day of the Lord or the day of Yahuwah, as I mentioned that the, the, the word Lord has actually been used as a substitution or a replacement for the Creator's name. So that's why I always say the day of Yahuwah, because in the original, that's what it really says. But anyway, that's another teaching. But, but the fact is that... Uh, the, in, there's two different events that Paul is speaking about in 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. And I'm going to go there in just a few minutes, but I want to start it all start it off in, in talking about this time frame that Yahushua, the Messiah, uh, warned about that, uh, for, that it would come upon the whole earth as a snare. Now, for those that are paying attention and those in Bible, that are studying Bible prophecy, we know and understand that we uh, can, maybe we don't know the exact day or the exact hour, but we do know, can know that it's of the day approaching. It's mentioned that in the book of Hebrews. It says, let us not neglect the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of sun, but let us, you know, uh, as we see the day approaching, you know, we, this is something that we are, something that we can actually see and that is those that are paying attention, those that are studying the scriptures, those that are paying attention to the prophecies in, in regard to the rapture and the tribulation time frame, then those would not be caught unaware. They would be 
uh, aware of the time frame that we're living in. And of course, there are so many signs over the last years that we that I've been studying Bible prophecy that they're so numerous uh, that it's just overwhelming. I'm more surprised that the rapture hasn't happened than than the fact that it's going to happen because the fact is that uh, there's been so many signs to show us that it's near. So me, like, uh, and of course, a lot of you others have been paying attention. So we, we're aware that this time frame is upon us. So we won't be caught unaware. And so we're, we're really the ones that he's mentioning to the here. He's warning that those that are not paying attention, they're going to be caught unaware. And just like a trap that uh, entraps an animal, you know, it's once that trap is uh, is caught the animal. The animal is he is it's it. He's caught, and it's that's the way it's going to be with uh, people who aren't paying attention, who aren't believers, or even if they are believers, they're not paying attention. Of course, if they're born again, this is something I really want to emphasize: that if someone is truly born again, I'm not talking about somebody that claims to be a Christian or claims to be saved just simply because of their understanding of what a believer is. But if someone is truly saved, <clears throat> they have the spirit, they're born again, they will be going in the rapture. Now, even if they're not aware or been studying scripture in regard to, to the end times or so forth, they're still going to go because they're righteous. And that's the whole point is as we, as we read down further here, uh, the Messiah says, Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man or stand before him. You know, uh, <clears throat> there's nothing that makes a person righteous except for the fact is that they're born again, they're saved. That's the thing that what was according to what you believe. You know, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy that he saved us. That's how you're saved is because you believe the gospel. He that believeth has everlasting life. It doesn't say he that believeth has and does good works and does all these things, that he, then he'll be saved. It has nothing to do with you as far as your performance. What it has to do is what you believe. And if you truly have put your faith and trust in the Messiah, you are righteous. And I've done a number of videos on the fact is trying to help people understand because this is one of the greatest things that I began to learn and understand after I got saved was I was fortunately taught by some good teachers about the fact is that I, if you're born again, that I was the righteous one the scripture is talking about. It's not my righteousness. It's not your righteousness that's going to cause you to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's his righteousness. It's his righteousness. And the only way that you attain to his righteousness is if you believe in the one that the Father has sent. If you believe that Yahushua, you may know him as Jesus, but if you know him, you know, as the one that the Father has sent, then, and you believe that he is the one, and then you, you put your faith and trust in <coughs> the completed work that he's provided for us, and you're not trying to add to what he's done, and you realize there's nothing you can do to improve <coughs> on his work of salvation that he has provided for us. And those that put their faith and trust in him will be given the set-apart spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh in Hebrew, that means a set-apart spirit, then you become one with him. He recreates you and I. And, you know, that's a hard thing for a lot of believers to understand when they're first saved. That most people think they're just forgiven. You know, they think they're a forgiven sinner going to heaven. But that's not what the Bible teaches. It teaches, as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Messiah, he is a new creature. New. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And I've shared that many times, and so, but it, it, I have to keep saying it because people, most people don't really believe that. They think they're still a sinner. And, of course, we still sin. <coughs> Excuse me, but in the realm of the spirit where Yahuwah sees us as he is, that's what the scripture says, as he is, so are we in this world. Didn't say after we get to heaven. Now, I'm, the, the reason for this is that redemption is not complete, won't be complete to this body, takes on a new uh, nature. 
This body shall put on immortality. This body shall put on incorruption. But in the meantime, in the realm of the Ruach, in the realm of the Spirit, we're like our Heavenly Father we, because we have His Spirit. His Spirit lives in us. If you're born again, His Spirit lives in you. <clears throat> and I share with you also that one, one of the first things that I said and recognized after I was saved was that I felt like I was a new person. I felt alive, I said, for the first time in my life. And how true that was, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened or made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. So I was alive, but I didn't really understand the things that I understand now, because, of course, that's been uh, close to 50 years ago. And uh, so I've learned a whole lot by the Spirit. Uh, of what actually has happened. And so I want to encourage you that are born again that you're going in the rapture. It's not, it's, it's not based upon your performance or your works or even in fact is that you believe in the rapture. If you're truly born again, you're going to go because it's the righteous ones that are going to be delivered from the wrath to come. And we're going to get into these verses. I may not get to where I really want to go in this, this particular video, but I encourage you to stay tuned because I am, I'm going to share with you these scriptures that will bring freedom and joy to you, comfort to you. In fact, Paul wrote about that in 1 Thessalonians that he's told us to comfort one another with these words. And he was talking about the fact is that we're not appointed to the time frame of Yahuwah's wrath. We're not appointed to that. In other words, it's not for us. And the reason why it's not for us is because we are already righteous. Again, people have to understand that quit identifying with your flesh. You know, I, st I know I still sin. I still miss it sometimes. I still do things that I shouldn't do or whatever. But I know that you, that's not the way that the Father sees me. He's already, the Bible says, blessed is the man to whom Yahuwah, or the Lord, it says in your King James, but whom the Lord or Yahuwah will not impute sin. Now, that word impute, means he will not hold it against you. He will not hold, why? Because the, the price has been paid for our sins, according to Hebrews, that the Messiah, he has paid uh, one price uh, for our sins forever. There's no more sacrifice that has to be done. So the, the penalty uh, or the punishment due to us, he bore that on himself. Isaiah chapter 53 talks about that he has borne our iniquities. And I've shared with you that word iniquities actually is the Hebrew word avon. And it means more than just bearing the sin because that, that what does that really mean when he bears the sin? No, the word avon means the punishment that was due for our sins. So the punishment due for every sin that you and I have ever done or will do was laid upon the Messiah. That punishment he bore for you and I that we could go free and be free from the punishment of sin. Now, I'm not encouraging you because the things that I'm sharing with you, people t go to the extreme and say, oh, you can just encourage people to sin or whatever. I, that's far from what I, I'm saying. Um, I'm just sharing with you the, 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 the truth and the reality that if you're born again, we have the Father's nature. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 says, we've become partakers of the divine. That's Yahuwah's nature of the divine nature. And we were by nature children of wrath before that. But see, that's what the new birth is all about. That's why Yahushua said a man must be born again in order the kingdom, in order to enter the kingdom because it wasn't a matter of just our sins being forgiven. Because if that was the case, that once you got into heaven, and of course you wouldn't be able to unless that you had a savior that paid the price for your sins. But the point is, you had to be born again because there's no way that you could enter the kingdom being still spiritually dead, spiritually related to the devil. We had to have the Father's nature imparted to us. Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says, But if any man have not the spirit of Christ or Messiah, or Messiah, he's none of his. You have to have his spirit. And that's why Yahushua said in John chapter 3, a man must be born again. Hallelujah. Well, I hardly got really near where I want to go 
and what I want to share with you right now in this video. But please listen in. Uh, I'm going to be sharing more on this topic. I want to get over into First and Second Thessalonians and talk about the two things that Paul is talking about there is the rapture and also about the day of the Lord or the day of Yahuwah. And people sort of lump scriptures together not knowing the difference of that. And uh, that's why there's a lot of confusion in, in a lot of people's understanding. So we'll get into that. Uh, I'll mention this before I close. Uh, also, there's I've got over 2,000 more videos that I've done teaching on. I encourage you to go and look through that through, on my website. I'm not on my website, but on my YouTube channel. And uh, just be blessed by some other topics that I've taught on. And uh, if you like this video, please like it for me. It would help uh, getting my videos exposed more to people out there that uh, I want to be a blessing to others to just to learn and understand the things that I've been taught and uh, to do, be a blessing to, to others as well. So please share my videos, do that as well. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so as well. And that way you'll be updated on these other videos I'm gonna be doing on this topic as well. Well, I love you and Yahuwah loves you, our creator. And uh, until next time, Shalom.